Hey everybody, it's Ramona. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have a very special guest here to do my cook along with me. Actually, she's going to do the cook along. So right over there is Teresa T for two that everybody knows from Instagram and YouTube. And I want you to make sure you follow Teresa. I'll link her channel down below because Teresa is going to be doing her more of her own cook alongs on her channel. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, we're going to have lots of fun. So tonight we are making punzit, right? Very good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> With uh, pork and chicken and shrimp. And as a side, we are going to have these Trader Joe's steamed soup dumpling. Uh, sorry, steamed chicken soup dumplings, which are yummy. I've had them before. You've mm -hmm. seen me all of them. Okay, so first of all, Teresa is going to talk about the prep that we've done so far, and then she's going to show you how we're going to prep the vegetables in front of her. Okay. Take it um, away. So this, on this plate, we've got chicken and pork. And basically, I just get a boneless, skinless pork chop and these are either chicken breast or chicken tenders and you want to cut them in bite-sized pieces about the size that you see here i don't want to pick it up and touch it because i don't want to like touch the other okay, stuff and bring it. it a little bit forward so they can like see that. the size more like that more like that yep <laughs> <laughs> so that's about the size just bite-sized pieces of meat um so that is the meat um also and so if somebody didn't Say mm -hmm. they were allergic to pork or they don't eat pork for mm -hmm. whatever reason. They could admit it if they wanted to. You could to. leave it out. Okay. Um, there's also pork in this, though, but you could still leave it out. Um, it'll still be good with the chicken and the shrimp. Okay. I think it would still work. And this is the Chinese-style sweet sausage. Good. And this is what it looks like. It's mostly cooked, but you definitely want to cook it all, you know, heat it all the way through. Like you can't just eat it out of the package. So it's I like mostly that. cooked. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it does look like it would be really it good does. to do that. So that is, and I'll show okay. you how I slice these up. Okay. Now we got all these in, in, ingredients in my local Chinatown in a Chinese market, an Asian market. So if somebody doesn't have an Asian market, do you think that that Chinese sausage is readily available in other places? They just have to search it. Um, you just have to kind of it's not readily available. Um, I've never seen any outside of the Asian markets, unfortunately. Okay, I but know. I will tell you, if you do put the chicken and you do put the pork and you do put the shrimp in, it's going to be good even if, if you don't have the it. Chinese sausage. Okay. It will be fine. It will still be delicious. Yeah. So basically, everything we, we bought today, well, maybe not the noodles, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. in a minute. Okay. So if you couldn't, if you didn't have an Asian market and you mm -hmm. didn't find the the Asian sausage, you could get everything else in a regular grocery store. Yes, I have seen the mung bean noodles that I'm going to be showing you guys here in a minute at Publix. Okay. So you might even be able to find it at your Kroger. Okay. Uh, any of your larger, maybe even Walmart. Okay. Any of your larger chain. Because a lot of chains stores. now have international aisles. That's true. Of international. So food. you may very well find the mung bean noodles. Okay. There. All right. So other ingredients that we're going to be using, you tell me if I need to show it uh, into view. Let's talk about, and then we can move that out of the way and then okay. you can bring your uh, cutting board a little right bit forward. This is just a chopped onion and chopped celery. We did one uh, fairly good sized onion and about two, did we two, two three. stalks, three stalks of celery. So that's what oh, that you're right, is. two, yeah, two, that was okay. two. Okay, so These, then. Uh, mm. I'm gonna show the noodles. Yep, yep. These are the noodles, they come in different packaging so they're not always going to be in this exact packaging but basically you can look on the back and you will see in fact i'll take out this netting so you can see it a little clearer that here's the ingredients you'll see that there's uh, mung bean noodles that's what we're looking for right there the yeah. mung bean so these are the mung bean noodles this is the noodle i use for my ponset Traditional ponset uses a flour stick noodle. And it's sort of like a, a yellow spaghetti looking type of noodle. Okay. I don't like those. I find them heavy, hard to digest. I prefer these. This is my own addition to this recipe. Okay. And I love it and I've used it ever since. So I highly recommend the mung bean noodles. I've seen them at Publix okay. and the international food aisle. Okay. Now, something I do see frequently is rice noodles. Is that you could an, use an that. acceptable substitute? You definitely could use that. They do require more cook time. These, you basically, this is what they look like. They're dried. Sometimes in the bundles will be a string tied around it. So if you see that, cut it off. Just check it for that. This does not have that. Um, the rice noodles, you definitely need to actually cook those. 
These mung bean noodles, I'm going to show you in a little while how we prep those. Basically, you're going to soak them in very, very hot water for about half an hour for them to soften, and then we're going to cut them to size, which we'll show you in a few minutes. But this is what they look like dried. Okay. So, and we do have some soaking, so we're going to show yes. you that shortly. So there's the noodles. Okay. So bring your cutting board right about here. here. Yep. Okay. About there. Okay. This is a half a head of cabbage, green cabbage, the cheap stuff. It is good and it works for this just fine. Okay, and then we've got three carrots. We're gonna julienne these. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can cheat and buy like the carrot chips and di you know slice those up julienne or you could even buy these like shredded. Shred yeah. Not finely shredded, okay. but they're like just shredded I, I, for your salad. Yeah, at Walmart I see even uh, Strings of carrot, carrot yeah, strings. Yeah, that. They're kind of like that. Julienne like thick or strings. You yes, could use yes. that. So you don't in. recommend though just using grated carrot, like grating no, it on the grater. No, you don't want. You, yeah, because you don't want it fine. Like okay. you want pieces, pieces okay. of carrot in okay. there. So I'm going to show you how to julienne these yourself if okay. you just want to buy carrots and do it mm -hmm. yourself. Also, you can cheat and buy a bag of pre-shredded cabbage if you want to be real lazy. I, we just didn't find any at the Asian market, so I'm going to show you how to shred the cabbage up yourself as well. So we're going to do that. And so, what you want me to do next? You want me to go ahead I'm and do the carrots? Director. You <laughs> You're my creative director here, Ramona. <laughs> I'm just, no, 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 I'm the cameraman. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and slice the vegetables up, and then we'll do the sausage. Yes. Yeah. You okay. don't want to cross contaminate. Uh -huh. So, okay. Um, let me move the carrots and out of the way for the moment. We'll do the cabbage okay. first. Actually, I'm going to do the carrots first, and I can put them on that bowl. And that's a clean cutting bar we can use okay. that for the, for the so uh, sausage. I do want to use this big knife for okay. my carrots. And you make sure I'm in frame. You are in frame. Okay, so this is what I do. The fatter the carrot, the easier to julienne. But um, it'll work. It doesn't have to be perfect. None of the things that you chop have to be perfect. It, it's going to work out just fine. It's going to be delicious. So do not worry if it's not perfect. But you just cut top, some tails off. And then basically I'm gonna cut on a diagonal um, to make like chips. Okay. So, and like I said, the, the fatter the carrot, the easier it is to do this with, but it's gonna be fine. And so where did you learn to make this? I am half Filipino. My father was from the Philippines. When he met my mom and married my mom, she, totally loved his culture and totally adopted his culture. She taught, my dad taught my mom how to cook as well as all of us kids how to cook. So your father must have been a good cook himself to very be able good. to teach your mom. Yes, he's a very good, very good cook. Okay. He was a cook in the Navy. That's why, oh, okay. actually what, when he was in the Navy, that's one of, was one of his um, duties. Okay. So, and so do you cook a lot of Filipino food? I do. Highly requested by all my friends, whenever I get invited to a get together, they always want me to bring Filipino food, of course. And what is their biggest request? Lumpia is being okay. number one, ponce at number two. Okay. Number three is adobo chicken or okay. adobo ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm very happy okay. to accommodate. So stay tuned to Teresa's channel. As I said, I'm gonna link it down below because I also have requested that she do a cook along or whatever you're gonna call your cooking mm -hmm. shows. Uh, for lumpia because I love lumpia. Now here's a question for you: Is it lumpia or lumpia? Lumpia. Lumpia. <laughs> All right, you need to get it right. Okay, so okay, so this is like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because like the smaller carrots are hard harder to do this with. But I'm just gonna take these pieces out just so I can kind of stack because I want to show y'all my kind of messy way to do this. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm curious yeah. to see how this is, what you're doing. I, there's a method to this madness. I'm sort of like, like, why are you like stacking them like dominoes? I'm not going to show you why. Is that knife acceptable? Do you need something? Yes. Thing? No, okay. that knife is good. Okay. Ramona has nice sharp knives. I complimented her on that. Okay. We're going to just kind of lay them forward. Okay. Because what I'm going to do next, in fact, this, the chain is too long. I'm going to shorten the chain. <laughs> is once you get them kind of laying in a domino effect, I'm just going to run my knife through them. 
Oh, your fingers all the way. Okay. And so those, the original coins that she cut are about wait, a quarter inch thick, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I would say. I mean, oh, just, well, just, how easy is that? So I don't know if this is like technically called, you know, your proper julienne cut, but it's like little Whatever. matchsticks. Yeah. Like little matchstick it carrots. Works. And this is the size we want okay. for our ponset. Okay. Like I said, you see it's not perfect and it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Who see how they're like perfect? little Nobody's perfect. Little yeah, that's okay. Size. Yeah, got it. And I just keep going down the chain. Tuck your fingers in, folks. Yeah. I don't want to leave my DNA into the ponset. No. <laughs> so hopefully this time next year, Teresa will have her own show on the Food Network. <laughs> I'll settle for PBS. I'm, I'm not, uh, Or PBS, absolutely. Yeah. On Create, you that know. That is so People cool. at Create can certainly give yeah. me a call. I would not mind that at all. I'm very excited to start following your cooking shows. Thanks. I'm excited to do it. Ramona's teaching me how to edit. Yes. I mean, I don't know how to edit, but I can... I can... She's mash, teaching me how to use iMovie. Yeah, I can mash a whole bunch of pieces together. So that's what we're going to do that's today. That's going to work for me just yeah. fine. I'm going to put these are on this plate here. We might, these carrots are pretty good size. We might only need two of okay. them. But, you know, it's if you have a lot of veggies, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Unless you don't like veggies. Oh, no. No veggies. <laughs> good knife skills, Thank as they you. would say on the, on the cooking show. I like I playing have, with knives. I have a hard time doing the, you know, <laughs> curl, you know, my fingers under. And so, that, you know, you're doing a great job. Thanks. But see, like these little loose pieces, mm -hmm. just do them lengthwise and just okay. tuck your fingers under. Just... Okay, nice so uh, while you're chopping, uh -huh. where were we today? Uh, Bucky's? You talking about okay. Bucky's? Well, no, I'm not, but the, go ahead oh, and talk before about that. You talking about before that? Yeah. Um, we were at Dish Society. Mm -hmm. Dish Society. Dish Society. And we had lunch with the ladies. Uh -huh. Our Instagram group of yes. friends. Shantae, I missed you so much if you're watching. I'm so sad I didn't get to meet you in yeah. person. Shantae's fabulous. I mean, everybody's fabulous. Yes. So we had lunch uh, with, uh, not Shantae, uh, Amy Jo One Melting Point from Instagram. Danny 8KT from Instagram. Penny, oh, Penny changed her name. To Penny Melting or something like that? Penny Loves Wax, maybe? No, it's like Penny Melting. Penny Melting Wax. Penny Melting Wax. Penny, penny Melting Wax and Joanne Gillick. All Instagram friends, I guess, in our wax community. So that was really, really fun. Um, and we'll definitely do it again when Shantae's available. And we do these kind of Instagram meetups once every couple of months or so. Um, so that was fun. Then after that, we went, we did go to Bucky's. <laughs> and I know Kim, Kim and I ha had many a trips to Bucky's on our Texas Triangle trips. It's a fun place. It is a fun place, isn't it? Everything yes. there. And we did buy some uh, Swan Creek melts, mm -hmm. which we'll actually maybe tomorrow when we go live, we'll show everybody what we bought from Swan Creek. Okay. We'll do that. So that it's been a great, great day. Yeah, I've been having a, a, a great time here in Houston. It's beautiful. I love... The weather has been great. It is now, but come back in a day and it's going to be 100 degrees. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, we're having good weather for sure. So, Teresa going. arrived last night. Her Your flight was supposed to arrive at 8.30. Eight, you didn't get yeah. arrived till 10 till 9.30. Then by the time we got our bags and whatever, it was like almost 10.30 when we came back here. We had some nibbly bits and some vino. Mm -hmm. I slept really good. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I slept really good. And both of us were saying earlier how amazing it is this, you know, social media, YouTube world has brought so many people together who enjoy like things, whether it be wax or beauty or cars or, you know, whatever it is, cooking. And I mean, 
I would never have met you. I would never have mm -hmm. met Kim or Shantae mm -hmm. or Char or, you know, all of us. And we just have such a wonderful, and even though there's many people that I have not met in person, like Heidi and Susan. I mean, I can go on and on. I'm not going to name names because I'm going to forget people. I want to meet all of you I mean, guys. It's just so amazing that we consider all these people our friends. Our community is amazing. Love it. I do too. I think we're only going to need two carrots. Okay, we got our carrots. So two carrots. It just depends on the size of your carrots. It looks like two is going to be plenty. In fact, these other little pieces here, we can just yeah. snack on those. Because I did peel them. I peeled the carrots. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so the, the cabbage. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I was like, what do I do with the head? So, is this all going to, do you want a separate bowl for the cabbage or is this all going to basically go in the pot at the same time? I do need a separate bowl for okay. the cabbage because that will go in at a different time than these harder vegetables. But on the cabbage, just peel off the first couple layers because it's really wilty and, and soft and limp, as you can see. Yeah. So, and, and really for the size pot that we're making, we may or may not need this whole half a head. Again, it just depends on how big of a head of, you know, lettuce, I mean, uh, cabbage you have. Okay. But we'll uh, shut it all up and see what we have. Okay. And this is the core here. I went ahead and just cut it in half, and I'm just going to cut the core out. Mm -hmm. You just do it kind of a little triangular shape, like so. I love cabbage, and Me I will too. take cabbage and just fry it up in a pan with salt and pepper mm -hmm. and butter. I have an awesome fried cabbage recipe that mm -hmm. maybe I'll do on my um, channel. Do it. So little little teaser there. Okay. It's um, my friend Sarah taught me how to make it, and mm -hmm. it's so good. It cool. is so good. Okay, so then I'm just going to do it like so. Okay. Like quarter it. Mm -hmm. And then basically kind of this way I'm going to just, you know, shred it and shred it. And you said that if we can find the pre-shredded ca cabbage, yeah, that's good to use. use it. Okay. Like the cab, you know, like coleslaw, mm -hmm. like back mm -hmm. the shredded. Oh, coleslaw. yeah, okay, coleslaw. You mix. could totally yeah. cheat and use okay. that because that's that also has <laughs> carrots in it as well. <laughs> well, if, just get the one that's just cabbage, because okay. um, those carrot pieces are a little too small. Okay. So, and just you know, and then if you're gonna see when we get done with the pasta, it's kind of. Um, neat <laughs> that the cabbage to a degree kind of disappears mm -hmm. and you don't really see it but it adds such an incredible flavor along okay. with everything else like these are such simple ingredients but when they the flavors meld together it just you'll see what the i mean you guys will be able to smell <laughs> it unfortunately but it just smells I and will. so unique i love pon ponset 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 um i work with a lot of filipino nurses and whenever we have potlucks at work, whoever's on call on duty that day is <laughs> you're you're on the list. You're bringing pawns that they just don't even ask. So I'm excited to learn how to make it because I love to eat it, um, and I'm learning directly from the source. So and the I'm real making deal. it with everything, everything. I'm okay. not skimping because you know me and Ramona were talking about this. Like if when you're making enough to feed like. A whole team of people mm -hmm. obviously you may not be able to afford to put all of these meats in because we're putting shrimp in this thing too mm -hmm. so you may like not put all the meats in it or put not as much meat in it but when you're making it at home for yourself you can go all out okay which is what we are doing <laughs> in fact i'm thinking that this is going to be enough okay more than enough all right Okay, so let me just put okay, I'm gonna get it this elsewhere. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to cut the sausage. And then we're going to show you how to prep the noodles beyond the soaking because, um, well, you'll see, they're like super long. Just throw this in the garbage. If we were Rachel Ray, we would have a garbage bowl. Oh, yeah. We have a garbage sink. <laughs> See, I can have a like a Publix bag, and I'll I'll say GB, but it'll be garbage bag. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's not like infringement, right? No, it's gonna be a garbage not at bag, all. not garbage. Not at bag. all. So yeah, we got this. I have to work on my uh, 
<laughs> I'll sweep your floor later. Oh, no worries. <laughs> okay, so um, again, this is the Chinese sweet sausage. This is not spicy at all. It's just a sweet and it has a very unique flavor. It's super good. You can freeze whatever you're not going to use and pull it out at another time. And I can even cut it frozen. Okay. You don't have to thaw it out if you're going to, because you have to cook it. So I can cut these frozen. Okay. Anyway. So, get these scissors uh, over there. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'm thinking for the size pot that we're making, I, I'm going to do three links. Uh, so here's a question. Okay. After this is made, is it freezable? No. Okay. <laughs> but I will give a, a tip. If you wanted to do like a lot of the prep in advance, you could take it as far as cook everything except the shrimp and except the noodles. Okay. Stop at that point, let it cool, cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and then the next day, put it on the stove, bring it to temperature, then put your noodles and shrimp okay. in. So you can do a little bit of like advanced prep, mm -hmm. but... Um, Freezing with the the noodles would probably turn mushy in the It freezers. is, and the carrots and everything oh, yeah, uh, okay. tends to be a little mushy. So I don't recommend freezing it, unfortunately. But I've never had any leftover to freeze. <laughs> okay, I'm sure I won't. <laughs> uh, it either. goes it goes really fast. Yeah, <laughs> wherever I've taken it. I'm excited. So. so for I mean, for me, and I think for many of us, the. It's the pre-prep that's gonna take time, but it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, I could do this. Just, oh yeah, anyone can, it's just time consuming. Yeah, it's just, the, it's just the prepping that takes time, but it's not, like I said, it's not difficult. And then we're just gonna, well, we're gonna see what's gonna happen, because I don't know. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you, the sausage is really good, but it's, it's very moist, as you can see. Okay. Works great as a hand moisturizer. Oh, so, okay, <laughs> so if somebody didn't have an Asian market in their town, and they mm -hmm. had access, if they, in their grocery store, they had, like, uh, what am I thinking? What's the name of that? Like, uh, Polish sausage or anything like that. The flavors are not going to be the same. Yeah, I've never tried it with any other kind of sausage, okay. to be honest. I, I don't. Kielbasa is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I've never tried it. Um, okay. But hey, if you put it in yours, uh, I'm not going to tell anyone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you try that, let yeah. me know how it, okay. how it was. But okay. I've never really, I've either okay. had it with this or or no, or okay. no sausage. Is this spicy sausage? No. Or sweet. 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 It's like okay. meaty. In fact, if you smell this, Ramona, that's kind of how it tastes. I know it's not going to help you guys, but yeah, it tastes very similar to how it smells. It it's is a little unique. sweet. It's, I don't. It's not spicy. Yeah. I'm going to taste it. It's cured. <gasps> I'm, I'm, it's, it's cured. <gasps> I'm going to be fine. Let me see okay. okay. It's good. Yeah, I mean okay, it is. So, it's mostly cooked, but they just want you to heat it through yeah. all the way. But yeah, go for it. Yeah. It does not taste like kielbasa. Mm -mm. It's, it's so got you don't, a nice texture. I don't texture. think you would, it does. I don't think you would want to use kielbasa or, you know, smoked links or mm -mm. anything like that. So I guess possibly what you're saying is if you, if you can't get that. Just leave it out. Just leave it out. But this is about the size that you want it. Okay. Is that in frame good? It is indeed. Yep. This is so good. And you can make other use this for other dishes and stuff. It's really good. It's good with eggs. It's good in um, any kind of stir fry. Mm -hmm. Super good. Oh, like it's meaty. Like a Chinese fried rice with eggs and sausage yeah. and bean sprouts. Yeah. And... It's, yeah. It's, um, it's good. I want to say I, um, my mom made it in a soup once, I think. That was really good. So, yeah, it's useful in many things, but this is really the main thing I use it for. Okay. And uh, I was asking uh, Teresa earlier, do you speak to Tagalog? Tagalog? Mm -hmm. Tagalog. Oh, there's a G in there. Okay. And I do not speak it fluently, unfortunately, because my dad did not teach us because my mom did not speak it. We understood a lot. Uh, so I do know some, but and we did understand more than we spoke because my dad would be on the phone talking to one of his friends. Mm -hmm. 
and we knew even without him saying our name we knew he was talking about one of us and which one of us and that he was telling something embarrassing because I remember one time I was like daddy stop don't tell him that and he laughed he just thought it was so funny mm -hmm. so we did understand because you know like I said okay. he had a lot of poker and mahjong games over at the house uh -huh. and so we were around it being spoken quite a bit and when he was mad he he would that's talk to language. us in Tagalog uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. In a very angry tone, yeah. and we knew exactly what yeah. he was saying. So, did your mother ever learn any Tagalog? Nope. Nope. She never did. She, I mean, she knows some, you yeah. know, some words, but... But uh, not enough. They would not no. converse. No. Okay. But, um, but fortunately, uh, like I was telling Ramona, in the Philippines, I have relatives that live in Tagaytay, and in the Philippines, in school, they do teach you English. So, all of my friends and relatives in the Philippines do speak uh, very good English mm -hmm. as well, so that's good. So, in where you're from, is there a big uh, Filipino community that you're a part? Uh, you, where I live you, now? You, yeah, we. Uh, um, somewhat. Uh, Jacksonville, because there is a naval base there, there's a pretty good concentration of. And um, we have a Jolly Bee restaurant, which is a Filipino fast food restaurant. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Yep. Uh -huh. um, so we have a Jolly Bee. So mm -hmm. yay. So yes, mm -hmm. we have a good enough Filipino okay. community to where they felt found it a good place to put a Jolly Bee. Okay, good. And so do you like have, you know, get togethers frequently of, you know, a bunch of Filipino friends or, you know, what do you have? Actually we do. Um, we, there's a group of us, um, especially when my brother and his wife come to visit, there is a group of us that get together, have a little potluck, have a good visit or go to Jolly Bee. Um, so yeah, we have okay. we have a little a little circle of friends okay, that we great. Um, right. hang out with. Okay, so that is nice. Okay. All right, so oops. So it's now time to show the noodleage. Okay, you want to put the uh, sausage oh, in there? I sure can. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ramona is an excellent helper. She hasn't got my bill yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, she's worth every penny. <laughs> she is worth every penny. I'm trying not to touch it again because I just washed my hands. Because <laughs> it is um, oily, but it's not greasy when you cook it in the food. It's like, like it will not be greasy, but it's just the outer coating is pretty oily. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you had to equate it to something, I guess it would be similar to like a chorizo. Yes. Or a, yeah, yeah like chorizo, that. but not hot. It's yeah, not spicy. I would though. agree with that. Thank I you. would agree with that. Okay. Scissors. I'm just gonna wipe up here real quick. Okay, so the noodles that we showed you earlier, we put them in a bowl and I just ran really, really hot tap water. Then I take a measuring cup with one to two cups of water and I microwave it until it's boiling. And then I just add that to the tap water that's already in here just to make it extra, extra hot. So you're gonna soak these, use a fork to kind of break them, separate them up, soak them for about half an hour. Then you're gonna drain them. Then we're going to cut them to a more manageable size because some of these are like super long. Like see how long they are? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, okay, I wanna curl. ask about the, the <laughs> ratio of noodles to water. So did you just mm -hmm. like, you? did you measure it or you no. just covered the dry just noodles? Just covered the dry noodles with, till they're submerged okay. in water. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now what I do is I use my kitchen scissors and a fork and there's no real science to this and you know it's not guaranteed every single one's gonna get cut but it's good enough. Mm -hmm. I just pick up, cut. Okay. Pick up, cut. <laughs> and just do that as much as so you find, feel like you've got it cut through pretty well. So it's just kind of manageable length. Yeah. Sometimes not, like I said, it have um, to be perfect. when you go for fa, like you try to, you get the fa out of the bowl, yes. it just goes on and on and on. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah, you have a big mo mouthful of dripping down your chin. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So just kind of pick up and cut. And I may not use all of these noodles. Um, once I get to adding them, I'll kind of see what the, you know, ratio, ratio to all the other goodies is. And, you know, I may or may not use all of these. I don't measure anything when I cook, so. And I think cooking is 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 kind of like you doesn't necessarily require measuring like no. baking does. Baking right. requires specific That's correct measurements. And you know, some people might want more noodles and less yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, yeah. so far, all of this is easy. Mm -hmm. It's just the pre prep. It's but it's not difficult. We can all do this. And it's so good. I'm not even lying. I'm not being partial. It is. This is so yummy. <laughs> I love so it. good. 
And it's light. That's why I love these mung bean noodles. They're they're light and they digest so easy and like you can eat more <laughs> because they're not as filling. They're very light. Mm -hmm. Almost done with the cutting. So that's it. So that's pretty much all you do for the noodle prep. And okay. you're like I said, you're gonna set these aside because these will be going in towards the end with the shrimp. Okay. So that is it for the for the prep. So uh, we have our shrimp is already peeled and deveined off to mm -hmm. the side. We didn't do that because everybody knows how to do that. <laughs> so are we coming back gonna, to the Yeah, to we're the gonna cooking? cut it off here and we're going to get out our pot and move the camera over to the stove. So we will see you shortly. Bye. Bye guys. Okay, we are back. All our veggies and meats are cut. The noodles are softened, so we're gonna proceed with the cooking process. So take it away. All right, so in a pot, this is about the size pot we're going to do for all the ingredients that you, that we showed. And you can either put olive oil or avocado oil. This is what Ramona has, and I actually do love avocado oil. And just put, I don't know, about a tablespoon or so in the okay. bottom of the pot, just enough to, you know, get your- Coat the bottom. Meat and stuff. Okay. Like maybe two glugs. Okay, and right now you have this, the stove on a little le like medium. Medium heat, okay. yeah, medium to medium high because you're kind of, it's like a stir fry basically. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a stir fry, right. but you don't want like, like some stir fries are like high heat, but we're not going that, that okay. wild. So okay. about medium, medium all high right. heat. Nothing and this is why you want all the pre prep done because it's gonna go fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't try to chop and cook while you go because things will get overcooked. Okay. okay, we're putting both the pork and chicken in. Okay, but you're not cooking, putting the sausage in right now? Nope, that, since it's half, more than halfway cooked, like mostly cooked, it will go in at the end uh, before the shrimp. Okay. And before the noodles. Okay. And the meats go. And I am, even though we are going to use some soy sauce, I still like to season my meat as it's being cooked so that the flavor gets into the meat. So I am going to add a little salt and pepper. So not too much, but just some. I like to season my meat. If you don't season it while it's cooking, it tends to taste a little bland. Yes, I mean, don't all the Food Network, you know, chefs say mm -hmm. salt, 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 season, season, season. Yeah. And they say to the contestant, uh, you didn't put enough salt. In yeah, it show, you could definitely tell when there's not enough seasoning. Yeah. So. Now, if somebody liked things spicy, could they add some sriracha or sambal or something of that nature if that's what they're choosing to do? I've never tried that in okay, this that's dish. not traditional. Not traditional. Okay. Um, there's not a whole, whole lot of Filipino recipes that are very hot and spicy. Okay. Um, I don't know how that would taste in here. I wouldn't recommend something like a chipotle or okay. any kind of thing smoked. Okay. I think that would ruin, ruin the, the flavors flavor. that are going on mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. If anything, I mean, you might, some sriracha, I think you said mm -hmm. something about, mm -hmm. might be kind of good in here. Okay. Or jalapeno, but not okay. the smoked jalapeno. Okay. That could work. So generally speaking, Filipino food is not spicy like say Thai food. Thai. Yeah, or Korean food. Okay. Yeah, okay. not normally, okay. not normally. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to do Brown the meat when it's a good, about half way cooked, and then we're gonna start adding the other goodies. Okay. I'm so, gonna toss them over. And turn it up just a hair. And so, what are you looking for, just so that there's some browning on it, or just when the onions have softened a little bit? Um, we haven't put the onions in just yet, so just oh, basically right. browning okay. the meat. Okay. To where I mean, it's not gonna be 100% cooked yet, but I'd say. Um, about halfway cooked. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a Filipino restaurant in, in Jacksonville? We did have oh, a couple. Me, yes, you said that, yeah. Uh, one is still open. In my opinion, though, it's a little pricey, especially considering I can make it at home uh -huh. <laughs> for a lot cheaper. For a lot less. Um, but then, of course, we have Jollibee, which is the Filipino fast food restaurant. And then we had another one that was like a buffet that was really good, but they, they closed up. I don't know why. Because every, everyone loves Filipino food, so I have a hard time believing that they didn't have enough business mm -hmm. to stay open. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have any thoughts or ideas for, are you going to rename your channel? Nope. You're going to keep it Teresa T for two. Yep, because okay. um, when I started my YouTube channel, I, I originally thought it, it was going to be a cooking channel. 
So, and I'll talk more about that when I start doing On my your channel, shows exactly. as to what the okay. name Teresa yeah. T for two okay. means. Yes, don't give too much away. Yeah, there's there's a reason I named it that. So, we'll talk about that more. Well, I'm very excited to see. Thanks. What you're cooking. Okay, so we're kind of at that point now where, as you can see, it's you use no visible pink. Okay. But you know it's not cooked 100%. Yeah, okay. It's still on the inside, but no visible pink outside. So it's good and halfway cooked. So now we are going to add... The first thing we're going to add is the garlic, which we forgot to show you guys in the um, prep. So this is about three to four cloves of garlic. Again, you can adjust any of these things to your taste. But let's see. I'll start with that. Everything's better with garlic. I do love some garlic. We're going to use the garlic. I think I can go ahead there all for him. And so uh, something I noticed when we were shopping that ginger was not on our list. So ginger's not big and filthy. No, like well, it is. We do have certain dishes that have ginger in it, but just not ponset. I think that it would compete too much with the sweet Chinese sausage. Uh, okay. Um, so that's not traditionally in ponset. Okay. But, oh, yeah, we have ginger. We definitely have some ginger in some of our dishes. Okay, then we are going to do the... Carrot, onion, and celery. So if we were cooking Cajun, that would be the Trinity. But we're not cooking Cajun today. That's right. I'm kind of like not putting it all, all in because I kind of, like I said, I don't measure anything. So I kind of eyeball things to see, okay, do I think I have too much veg going on? Okay. So I'm just going to take a look at the situation here. Like I said, you can always use the rest of this for something later, mm -hmm. like a, some soup or something. Mm -hmm. But I want to kind of see how things are camping out here. Like I said, we're still going to... Well, the, the yeah. garlic is really blooming now. I can really mm -hmm. smell the garlic. Okay, I'm thinking that this might be enough veg. Maybe a few more carrots. Yeah, just a few more. Yeah. Okay. We'll adjust that for another time. Okay. And then basically... Um, at this point, I'm going to add some soy sauce to kind of season the vegetables and the meat a little further and kind of cook that soy sauce flavor in. And, and there is salt in soy sauce, so that's why I didn't go too heavy-handed okay. when okay. I salted the meat. All right, good to know. A couple turns around the pan. Uh, like I said, sorry guys, I don't measure, but just, you know, I would say this would be the equivalent to maybe two tablespoons to start. Because I'm going to add some more in later. But did our mothers and grandmothers follow recipes? Nope. No, they didn't. And <laughs> they, they sure were did not. being best, best cooks. Yeah, and then the best food came out of their kitchen. Absolutely. So we are just going to let that. So there's everything in the pot, and then we're basically just going to let this cook for about five to six minutes okay. before we add the cabbage. Okay, we're going to come back then. So in the meantime, uh, I'm going to make the dipping sauce for the soup dumplings. So we're going to move yeah. back over here. And um, I mean, you can add, of course, whatever you want. You can make it as spicy or as non-spicy as you want. But again, these are the soup dumplings from Trader Joe's. You just snip off the end to let the uh, steam escape. And so for a dipping sauce, this is what I do. I'm going to borrow that soy sauce. Voila. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to add some soy. And ju I just kind of dump and taste really is how I go. Um, so that's probably two to mm, two tablespoons. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, rice vinegar, which is pretty easily available on the Asian aisle in pretty much any grocery store. I'm going to add a splash of sesame seed oil. Splash away. I I would I add sriracha to mine and I check with Teresa and she doesn't mind so I'm going to add we'll start with that's probably half a teaspoon or so I'm kind of heavy handed with the spice um, of sriracha which yeah chili which is chili garlic sauce and for a little like sweet and sour and you know sweet and spicy I'm going to add a glug except my honey is crystallized. So we're not having sweet and spicy, we're just having spicy. And I'm going to stir that all up. I can mix that honey for you. Actually, let me just nuke it first. Okay. 
Yeah, that's what I'll say. Or put hot water and just sit it in the hot water and it'll loosen it right back up. Yep. Okay. So, so I'm going to... No. Cool. That works. So I am nuking the honey for 10 seconds. Yeah, by the time you're done with the dipping sauce, it'll be time to add the oh, uh, cabbage. Okay, so that'll work out perfect. Okay, perfect. That'll work. We make a great team, Ramona. Yeah, it's smelling really good in here. Okay, so I'm just going to add then, like, as I said, like, that's probably like a teaspoon worth of honey. So it's going, going to be spicy and sweet. And I'm going to taste it and see if it needs a little more sweetness or a little bit of more spiciness. And then I will, when we do the uh, dumplings, I will... that up a little bit. Tangy. <coughs> oh, we're down the wrong way. Oh, no. <coughs> so that's good. So, <coughs> the dumplings, I'm sorry. <laughs> it went down the wrong way. way. Yes. <coughs> Fine. I hate when that happens. Yeah. So these <coughs> go in the microwave for about two minutes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. And then this I'll nuke for probably like 15 to 20 seconds, just enough to make it warm. And that'll be the dipping sauce for the dumplings. <coughs> okay, back over here. Time to Sorry. add the cabbage. Okay. okay, so you see your thing is new, just still not 100% cooked, but we're trying our best not to let anything get overcooked. And this cabbage is now going in and it's going to cook down some before we move on to the final step. And like I said, this shrinks up so small that you really hardly even see it in the finished product. But it definitely adds an extra depth of flavor. Um, you know, working with all the other items, all the other ingredients. It's really a nice touch. And cabbage is really good for you. Okay, and then if I could borrow the soy sauce, I'm going to add another couple glugs mm -hmm. of soy. So, about another two tablespoons, I would say. And they just kind of really work the cabbage in. <clears throat> so, once you get everything together, this pretty goes together pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Once you get to the cooking part, it yeah. goes really quick. Yeah. This cabbage will take a few minutes to wilt down. So now you see it, but like I said, towards the end, you will not see these, you know, big pieces like that. It's gonna have really cooked into the dish. Okay. So we will you take come, back then. come back then. Okay, we'll see you okay. in a bit. Bye. All right, welcome back, guys. So, so you you can still see the cabbage, but when we add the noodles and everything else, you will barely be able to see it. It's a lot more wilted now than it what is, it was isn't in the it? beginning. Yes. Yep. It like really goes. So the, all that cabbage is like probably one little, like one little mound if you were to gather okay. it up. And while I can, mm -hmm. I can see in the bottom of the pot there's some liquid down there. Do we need? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is natural liquid from the vegetables and from the meat. That's gonna help when we put the noodles and everything else in. Now traditionally, uh, and we forgot to pick some up. That is my fault. Normally, I would have a cup of chicken bouillon waiting. Um, when you add the noodles in. I do not recommend using broth, chicken broth, um, because it adds a whole different uh, flavor. You definitely want the like powder or the cube chicken bouillon that you dissolve in a cup of water. Have that on the ready so that if you do need extra liquid to help you know, finish cooking your mung bean noodles, that you have it. We have water. With everything else going on, a little water is not going to um, hurt. It's not going to dilute the flavor. So okay. it will work if you, you know, did like us and forgot to get the bouillon. <laughs> so no worries. So now we're going to put the Chinese sweet sausage in. And Teresa did check a piece of the chicken. The chicken is cooked through. So you want to not mm -hmm. do this step until all your meat is cooked yes. through so far. Yes, the okay. you, you want before you add your noodles and shrimp, you definitely want to make sure all your other meat is 100% cooked because the noodles and the shrimp do not take very long at all, like three minutes tops, and 
that and you're done. So you want to make sure everything else before that is fully cooked. So while that is sauteing, I'm going to pop the soup dumplings in for... Okie doke. <clears throat> Let's see how long. A minute 45. <clears throat> I think I'm going to add just another little glug of the soy sauce. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to save this until we put the noodles in, and I'll put a little glug on top of the noodles. I'm surprised Roxy is in here making an appearance. <laughs> yeah, I figure once the shrimp came out yeah. of the fridge, they might show up. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the cats, um, they're getting used to me. I got to pet Stella, right? Mm -hmm. Stella mm -hmm. let me pet her. Mm -hmm. Um, Roxy will come up to me and sniff me and sort of let me pet her with my very tip of my finger on her chin and top of her head, but that's about it for now. It's so, start. Yeah. I'm gonna, she's gonna be my friend before I leave. So, so just gonna let this saute up a few more moments okay. and then we're gonna be ready for the <coughs> final show here. But yeah, it just, everything just really does cook up really nice and quick. Yeah, this is a hit, as I said, at my work. Mm -hmm. I really hope Love. that you like mine. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I will. Fill one of these and see if they're heated all the way through. Oh. Woohoo! Hot. Okay, it's time to start adding the new dills. Actually, um, I'm going to do... Yeah, our noodles. We'll do noodles first, okay. and then shrimp. Okay. It's pretty much, yeah. They're pretty. It's pretty like at the same time. What would you like? I was looking for. I don't know what I did with that fork. I mean, you could just use your hands, but I, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. We got the big fork, and like I said, I'm just gonna kind of add them in and see, you know, what I'm looking at. To see how much I want. You can always add a little more in if you want. But it's a lot harder to take them out. <laughs> True. Are you looking for a 50-50 ratio of noodles to veg and Yeah, meats? as well as possible. I mean, some people like a little more noodle than, than the toppings. So it's to take Go ahead to and, and hand me that shrimp if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with this and see. Dump. Yeah, personal preference. Okay, yeah, go ahead and dump them all in. Okay. Now I'm going to add some more soy sauce. Um, or in Tagalog, okay. it is called toyo. What is it called? Toyo. Okay. Okay. We bought uh, fresh shrimp that we peeled and deveined ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if you could find frozen shrimp, would you that can be okay? Put, you can, and just make sure they're peeled and there's no tails and they're already peeled and deveined. Okay. And you can throw them in frozen. I do not thaw them. Okay. I will throw them from uh, from frozen into the pot. It okay. has been fine every time I've done that. And so fine. if you were using frozen, would you still add them at this point? Yes. At this stage? Yes. Okay. Because they do not take long to... Oops. Okay, I'm going to add a few more noodles. Then we're going to... It starts getting hard to, like, mix, so we've got tongs. Because, um, you know, the noodles are kind of... And the toppings still want to like sink to the bottom. But oh my god! If you it's guys workable. could be here, it is workable. Let's start with this and see how it's looking. All right. <clears throat> start working them in, Sorry. and you can use your fork and get in here with your fork if you need help trying to work them in. Okay. And I'm gonna lower the heat because we don't really need the heat real high at this point. Just enough heat to cook the shrimp because the noodles aren't really needing to cook per se because they're already you know. Hydrated. So as soon as the shrimp are pink and done, then you are finished. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of the water that we were talking about. This is just the a cup of water, but I'm not going to put the whole cup in, just a little to start, just to help keep things moving. And I just stuck the dumpling sauce in the freezer, or not in the freezer, in the microwave for about 15 seconds, just long enough okay. to get for Yep, the shrimp are already starting to turn pink. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yep. 
You see that? Mm -hmm. They're already mm -hmm. turning pink. They mm -hmm. cook fast. And I'm thinking, I don't know, what do you think? Do you want more noodles that, or are you happy with this amount? I'm happy with whatever you think is appropriate. Okay. So I it's might. your show. I got the trusty tongs here. This is what, you definitely need tongs to help serve because your toppings always want to sink to the bottom. The meat and everything kind of wants to sink to the bottom. Okay. So we'll definitely be using those. I'm thinking we can do with some more noodles. Okay. Let's do some more noodles. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use almost all the noodles that I soaked, which was about four, four or five of those little bundles that I showed you it was about how much I used. So we're going to use almost all of them. I'm so excited. <laughs> and a little bit more soil. Okay. And of course, like I said, the soy sauce is According to your taste, um, I mean, you don't have to put any soy sauce in here if you don't want to, but I do advise a little. <laughs> that looks amazing. All the toppings are kind of stuck to the bottom because it's just the nature of mm -hmm. the, you know, but you see the shrimp are really getting nice getting and cooked. There. Yep. I don't mind if the shrimp fall to the bottom because I want them to get to the yeah. heat and get cooked. And so right now we're still actually one a little bit less than medium. Mm-hmm. Heat. Yep. Okay, I'm just gonna let this sit. Okay. And let the shrimp finish cooking. I I, okay. I can do this. You certainly could. You are an excellent cook, Ramona. Well, I wouldn't say that. But I love your I, cooking videos. I could videos. definitely do this. It's really very easy. So, so we're gonna let this just finish cooking, okay. and then when we come back, I'll be showing you how to plate and garnish. Okay. Sounds good. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. All right. Here we have the plated pancit. And you can see, you see, you don't even really see the cabbage anymore, do you? That's true. No, you don't. It just melts into mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So you see, you got your shrimp. And a good tip on the shrimp, you see how they're sort of shaped like a C? C for cooked. And if you've ever made shrimp yourself or gone to a restaurant, you see where they're like tight, tight, curled up like an O, that means overcooked. So C for cooked, O for overcooked. That's a great tip. <laughs> so you've got your um, poncet, and then the way we garnish it, Especially if you put shrimp in it, you definitely don't want to skip this step. Okay. And that is a wedge of lemon. And just squeeze some lemon juice over. This really makes it. You can skip this if you didn't put shrimp in your poncet. No big deal. So we've got that. And then we have scallions or green onions. And these are raw. And I advise just using the green part because they have more mild onion flavor, whereas the white part towards the root tends to be more stronger onion mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so I save those for like cooking when I'm going to cook them. That looks fabulous and it smells fabulous. And that is it. And then you eat it. <laughs> and as they say, that's the dish. And that's the dish. <laughs> this is the dish. <laughs> Thank you so much to Teresa. This looks amazing. And I know me and everybody else are really looking forward to what's coming future down your channel. Thank you. I, I really hope to uh, show you guys some great recipes. And don't forget to show your dumplings. We got dumplings too. We have dumplings. So these are warmed in the microwave. One minute, 45 yes. seconds. I move, I warmed, sorry, the sauce. And we're going to have a feast. Yes, we are. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned to Teresa's channel. Teresa T for two. Teresa Thank for you. Two. Thank and I'll you. link her down below. So everybody have a great night and we will see you soon. Thank you, Ramona. Thank You're you welcome. guys. Thank you for coming to Houston, Teresa. Mm -hmm.